Well, if you're bouncing around in the woods or just out for a walk and looking for something handy, it's really hard to beat a lever gun. And this particular lever gun is really special. This is what's known as the Alaskan Takedown. And it's built by Chiapa in Italy. And it's imported by Taylor, who has nothing but good stuff. It's actually based on the old John Browning design of 1892. And it's a troop reproduction that uses a lot of the same interchangeable parts. We're gonna go talk some more about it. More importantly, we're gonna put some rounds on target. Joining us again on Shooter the Series. I'm Ed Thorell from Firearms Education and Training. Thanks again for joining us here at the Mystery Range. We really are enjoying ourselves here. We've got a lot of freedom. We sure like the quiet. It's got a much slower pace and a much better payoff for what we're doing with our videos. We'd like to thank all of our subscribers for sticking with us, helping us get in traction. So far, we're up somewhere close to 9,000, and our success is all because of you. Don't be afraid to hit that like share, and subscribe button so you can be a bigger part of the show. But today what we're doing is we're here talking about the Taylor Alaskan, and this is a takedown 357 rifle, or carbine rather, all made out of stainless steel in 357 Magnum. And it's a honey. I saw this on the shelf and I wouldn't let it out of my hand. You know, I knew this was coming home with me. And this comes with a lot of great features that really update the original Browning 1892 design. And John Browning came up with this at 1892 at the request of the head of Winchester. And the head of Winchester said, if you can give me a working prototype in less than 60 days, I'll pay you, you $15,000. John Browning, with the work ethic that he had, turned this out in less than 30 and received an additional payment and got a bonus of 15 that got him up to 20. Now, since then, the Browning Model 1892 has basically sold over a million versions while it was being uh, built between 1892 and 1945. And since then, it's been copied, it's been done by reproduction, because it's an absolute classic. This has also become one of the staples of Hollywood. Now, the 1892 really broke into the American imagination of 1939 when John Wayne, the Duke himself came out with his very first A-list movie called Stagecoach, featuring this with a big loop lever. Let's hear it for the Duke. But once the Duke got a hold of it, there was no stopping it. This became a staple for the TV westerns of the 1960s. You'll also notice that Chuck Connors in The Rifleman also used a big lever loop for uh, his show, The Rifleman. His was a little different though. He had a screw that was added right here. And the screw would go through and actually touch the trigger so that every time it was cocked, it would actually fire itself or the screw could be adjusted out for single shot. Now also, let's talk a little bit about Steve McQueen, the king of cool. He used what was called the mare's leg, which was a chopped down version of this into a pistol version for when he started wanted dead or alive. So. I'm feeling pretty good about hanging out with some of the top guys in the craft, John Wayne, Chuck Connors, Steve McQueen. Suddenly I'm feeling like I'm in good company. Now, this updated version is made by Chiapa in Italy, and it comes with some really great features. So it really updates an old Western classic and turns it into a new Western classic, which would be called a companion gun. Because if you're used to carrying a 357 in the field, as a sidearm, you could run the exact same cartridges through this and operate out of the same box of ammo. So it makes it super versatile. Also, there's hardly any kick. Just about anybody in the family can shoot this. Now, this is made completely out of stainless steel. Um, it's provided with a wood furniture with what's called an over-molded soft touch stock so it doesn't uh, show a lot of dings. It's pretty forgiving. It has a large loop lever, and these are actually offered in two different types, 
Um, one's more of a teardrop. Um, I opted for the one that was just a little bit more square. Now, like the conventional Model 92, it also comes with a half cock feature and a full cock feature. The half cock feature is generally regarded as a safety. So if you've got a round in the chamber, you pull it back to the half cock, and then if the gun takes a spill, it's going to protect it from hitting the firing pin. It's also got the lever, which opens all the way up, and then all the way to the rear. And for you rookies out there, with a lever action, you want to make sure that you don't short stroke it. When you're operating a lever action, you want to go all the way forward until you've hit the stop and all the way back. Doing anything other than that is going to result in a jam. So that goes to word to the wise. This right here that pushes in is what's known as your loading gate. And this is where you're going to push in your rounds one at a time and they're going to fill up the tube that goes underneath the barrel. The barrel is an octagon barrel, which is very highly prized. Um, it makes it more stiff, but aesthetically it's also very pleasing. Sitting on top the barrel is what Chiapa calls their Skinner sights. And this is basically a ghost ring sight up front with a very high visibility front sight up front. So it makes it for target acquisition very, very quick. Now, this little toggle right up here on top. If you move this out, spin it around several times, allows the tube magazine to come out. Once that's out, you can open this up, turn the barrel 90 degrees, and it lifts straight out. So that's why it's called a takedown. It comes down into two different pieces to make it easier to pack away, but also much easier to clean. So this had all the features a growing boy could want. For, for any kid that grew up in the 60s, growing up wanting to be John Wayne, this is about as close as it's going to get for me. I still ask at Christmas for a pony, probably not going to get it. But anyway, this is a fantastic little carbine and I don't think I'll ever be getting rid of it. Now, brand new, these things run about 1500 bucks, and that's because you're paying for all those features. The stainless steel, as well as the takedown. Some of these can be found used though, but most people that buy them don't get rid of them. So this is the Chiapa Taylor, Alaskan Takedown 357. And the only thing that's more fun than talking about a Browning rifle is shooting one. So stick around, we're gonna put some rounds down range. All right, so let's load this bad boy up and make a little music. So this is a lever action repeater. And like I said, it falls into the category of a companion gun because it allows you to use the same 357 Magnum or pick another pistol caliber that you might normally carry as a sidearm, but you're able to employ it in a carbine or a rifle. Now, this was also a very common practice during the 19th century with the Cowboys because they would have a process where they would basically match up their Winchester rifles, very often shooting a 4440, and match that up against a Colt, which also fired the same round. And for their daily purposes, that would take care of just about everything from bad guys up to taking game like deer. So it proved to be a really good idea a really catchy idea, and, and I think that um, having a combination uh, carbine to go along with a pistol is a fantastic idea. So, you ready for this? We're safe and we're clear. All right, that was serious fun. I could do that all day. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna break into our next segment that we like to call Shooter Shoutout. Yeah. All right, our first shout out today goes out to David Schneerson, and he really enjoyed our tips for loading mags. David said, Thanks for the very helpful video. 
He's very short of words. We appreciate that. Save some ink. David Schneer is on. Thanks again. Just to give you a little bit of a sneak peek, um, we want to let you know that we're also getting ready to do a video on the Upload mag loader for the AR-15. So stay tuned for that. You know, loading magazines is one of those little skills that most experienced shooters take for granted. And what we're trying to do is talk to people to find out what it is that they don't know. We might take it for granted, but we want to help you guys get over that threshold to make it easier for you. So David, thank you, sir. We salute you. Now, we also want to get to Autobot. Autobot really enjoyed the video on how to avoid limp wristing. And Autobot says, great video, sir. I'm always having issues with this. Well, Autobot, you're not alone. This is something that every shooter struggles with. And when you're dealing with compacts and subcompacts that have a slide that has a very short recoil cycle, you've got to be very careful to point that gun as far away from you as you can, lock out that wrist so that you get positive feeds and positive ejections every single time. We're going to be doing more videos like this to help everybody improve their technique. So thanks. Let's keep those comments going. Autobot, we salute you. We want to thank all of the people that are helping to make this video possible. The, the staff and the crew, especially Steve, the producer, who makes me look cool. And we know that's not easy because anybody that knows me says I'm not cool. But he does his best and it's all smoke and mirrors that, that allow us to get out here and do this every day. So be sure that you, you like, you share, and you subscribe and tune in to every single episode of Shooter the Series, see you don't miss a one. And thanks for joining our community. Y'all take care.